everyone. My name is Greg Jones, and I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to build your own PC. You're probably asking yourself, why am I building a PC? I'm going to give you some of my reasons why you should build your PC. My first reason is you have complete control of your PC. Instead of going to a retail store where they give you a pre-built machine, you can build your own PC and figure out what you're putting in and what you're taking out. That's part of my second reason. You learn more about your machine. You figure out why the machine is corrupted. You figure out how you can fix the machine. My last reason is you're, you're able to budget your own money. Let's say you're willing to spend $300. Building your own PC, you can build your own PC with $300. You can go to any retail store and find the specifications to build your own PC. This is your CPU. The CPU stands for a central processing unit. It's like the brain of the human body. It controls the computer, such as the brain does. Next is your motherboard. Your motherboard is like the skeleton of the human body. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the CPU inside the motherboard. So the first thing you want to do is you want to open up this little leather holder. We're going to put the CPU inside. There you go. And close it. Push this down, and then you want to hold the other and pull down this. It's in there tight enough. Now you're going to install the CPU fan. The CPU fan cools down the CPU because sometimes the CPU overheats, just such as a regular fan that cools you down when you're hot. So there are going to be four holes facing onto the motherboard. These four holes will allow the CPU fan to be stable. So what you want to do is place the CPU fan on top of the CPU. You want to snap it down onto the motherboard. Make sure it lines up with the four holes. Sometimes you may have to twist it for it to work. Now, once you installed the four holes inside the motherboard, you're going to connect the CPU fan cord onto the motherboard. It should label CPU fan 1. So connect that. And now installed. Now we're going to install the RAM onto the motherboard. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. RAM is basically the, com the computer memory. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the RAM onto our motherboard. Make sure the front of the RAM is facing the CPU fan. You want to line up the RAM onto the tabs. So we're going to put the RAM gently on the tabs. You should hear snap. Once you hear snap, it lets you know that your RAM is installed correctly. Use the next RAM. Gently place it inside the tab and share a clip. Now you have the RAM installed. Our next component is the power supply. The power supply provides power to the computer. So find a 24 pin, which is right here, and you want to connect that onto the motherboard. Go. You share a clip to let you know it's installed correctly. And we're going to add this four additional pin onto the motherboard. Now we have our RAM. We have our CPU fan, we have our CPU, and we have our power supply. This motherboard also has a 12 volt power connection. So we're gonna um, connect this power connection onto the motherboard. Next up, we have our monitor. We're going to connect our monitor onto the motherboard using a VGA cable. But first you need to understand what is a monitor. A monitor is basically a display screen that allows us to see what's inside the computer. Now we're gonna connect our monitor onto our motherboard. This here is your VGA cable, so you want to find out where is the VGA import. Just want to twist these and get into the motherboard. So once you got the monitor connected, we connect our mouse. A mouse is basically the navigation tool that allows you to navigate to different tasks quickly. So connect the mouse, which provides a USB import, I mean USB cord, and we're going to connect it to the USB port. We also have our keyboard, which is a set of data keys that allows you to import data onto the machine. So we also have a USB cable and connect it to the USB port. Great, now we have everything connected. But one thing we're missing is external cable cord for the power supply. So connect your external cable to the power supply, which is right here. So once we um, plug in our external cable onto the power supply, it gives power to the motherboard. That's allow our computer to be turned on. But first, you have to turn on the motherboard for it to work. Now you have to look at the manual and see what kind of motherboard you have, because certain motherboards may have a switch and some may not. 
So in this case, this motherboard does not have a switch. So now what you want to use this driver to tap on the pins to allow the motherboard to be turned on. Now this is a good sign. The CPU fan is running. Now that we have our outside build that has been tested and everything is working correctly, we're actually going to detach everything so we can prepare ourselves for the inside build. So first thing is to turn off your power supply and detach the cable that's connected to the power supply. Now you want to take away, um, take off the 24 pin cable. You want to take off the 4 pin that's connected to the 12 volt. Slide the power over. Now we're going to take off the USB ports, cables, and take off your VGA cable. Our first component here is the case, which is like your skin. It protects everything that's inside your body, such as the case protects every component that's inside the case. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the motherboard and the input and output shield inside the case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Lay the case down, and I'm going to place the input-output shield behind the case right here. Now we're going to install the motherboard onto our case. Make sure you line up the um, screw holes with the screws that's inside the case. So place your motherboard inside the case and gently connect it with the panel, but make sure that each hole is corresponding with the case hole. So once you place your um, motherboard inside the case properly with the um, input output shield and also the screw holes. You want to get your filler screwdriver you want to get your screws and you want to um, put the screws inside the screw hole. Now that we have the motherboard installed onto the case, we're actually going to install the power supply. In this case, the power supply is behind the, in the back of the case. So line up the holes onto the um, case holes and now we're going to use our screwdriver and our power supply screws. Now once we have our power supply installed inside our case, we're actually going to attach the power cables onto the motherboard. So our first one is the 24 pin. So here's the 24 pin that's located on the motherboard and here's the power cable. Now we're going to install, connect the 4 pin cable which is connected to the 12 volt on the motherboard which is located at the 8 pin. Everything is connected. Now we're going to move to our next component. Next up we have a hard drive. The hard drive reminds me of a backpack. You usually use a backpack to store your notebooks, clothes, phone, whatever you put in your backpack. And the hard drive you use to store your documents, photos, videos, music, whatever you want to store into your hard drive. Now we're going to install the hard drive on the case. To install the hard drive on the case, you want to place the hard drive in the hard drive slots right here, which is in front of the case. Make sure that you have your SAT cable facing towards the motherboard so you can easily connect your SAT cable, your SATA cable onto the um, hard drive. So gently place the hard drive into the hard drive slot and make sure that each you can see each screw so you can Put the screws onto inside these screw holes. Now, once we have the hard drive placed inside the hard drive slots, we're going to connect your SATA cable to the hard drive. You're going to connect the other part of the SATA cable onto the mod board. I prefer to move the other power supply so you can easily see the SATA input. Slide it in. Once we have the SATA cable connected to the hard drive and the motherboard, we're going to connect the power connection to the hard drive. And now we have a hard drive installed. The CD drive here allows you to read and write CDs or DVDs. To install the CD drive, is very simple. This case allows us to easily input the CD drive. And you want to line up the, the um, screw holes right here and line them up with the layer. So 
So I'm gonna connect the power cable onto the um, optical drive and the SATA cable onto the uh, optical drive and make sure it's connected to the motherboard. So now once I have each component connected um, on inside the case and connected to the motherboard, I'm actually going to connect my um, front case on front of the um, case. And then each of these cables, I will connect them to the uh, motherboard. So I'm gonna pour top cables onto the top of the case and the bottom the bottom. Just gonna easily clip it. Make sure it fits in tight. So once you have your front case installed onto your case, we're gonna connect each um, cable and install it onto the motherboard. So each cable has a label. For example, this cable says reset SW. So look on look onto your motherboard and you should see a label that says reset. So in this motherboard, it says reset. So I'm gonna connect this cable right in the reset panel. And the same thing you're gonna do for each of these cables. Connect each one that fits right into the uh, motherboard. So once we got these cables connected, we're gonna to go to our top part of the uh, front cable, which also have cables that's our label. These are pretty much easy. Um, we have one cable that says USB, and we have the other one that says audio and speaker. So we we're gonna find the USB port on the motherboard, and we're gonna connect this to the motherboard, which is labeled right here, USB. We're gonna connect that, and we're gonna connect the audio to the motherboard. Last but not least, your speaker, which is labeled right here as speaker. So once you have all your cables connected onto the motherboard, we're actually gonna um, put our case cover onto the uh, case. We're actually gonna install this case first because it has two fans, which provides a um, fan power, which we're gonna, we're gonna connect it to the power connection that the power supply has. And we're going to gently slide this case cover on to the case. I'm going to do the same thing for the back. Now, these are our case screws, and we're going to tighten them up. Now, we have our built computer. So what we're going to do is, before you catch yourself on the back, we're going to test this machine to make sure it works. So what you want to do is, connect your keyboard. Your navigation tool, which is your mouse. Your monitor using your VGA cable, which is actually located on the back of the computer. Import it. Last but not least, the power cable. Connect this to your power supply. Now to turn on the machine, first you want to make sure the power supply is on. So once you power your machine on, you should see a um, bio screen that's displaying on your monitor. That's a good sign. That lets you know that your machine is working correctly. It's one thing I would like to say to you guys. My name is Greg Jones. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoy your experience at PowerPoint. See you later.